Hi! Welcome to Donsky Tech. And this is Donsky, and I'm back with my new unique video series titled MongoDB Database for IoT Developers. Do you feel the need to interface your Internet of Things or IoT projects with a database? Then I hope this series would help you in that regard. So, why do we need a database in the first place in your IoT projects? I created this video to try to answer the common question that I often see on the internet. Hey, I have a sensor that I want to turn on or off by changing the records in my database. The other thing is, is it possible for me to log my temperature sensor data and place it in my database so that I can retrieve it later? Can I change the message displayed on my LCD or LED with a different message by changing it from my database so that there is no need for me to hard code the message in my Arduino code? The most likely solution when you try to Google and is recommended by many blog posts is using MySQL, PostgreSQL, or any other RDBMS or Relational Database Management System. But I think MongoDB is the more suitable database for any IoT projects. This is just my personal opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. This is a series of videos or posts that would explain to you the what, the why, and the how to use the MongoDB database in a practical manner. We will be using Arduino-powered microcontroller board, Raspberry Pi with Python, and MicroPython device like the Raspberry Pi PW. This is part one of this series where I would explain what MongoDB is and how it is different from the traditional database such as MySQL. So, as you can see in here, there would be several parts that I would be creating for you to understand further how to use MongoDB in your IoT project or for simplicity's sake, how can you incorporate a database in your Internet of these projects? Are you excited? Then let's start exploring. What is a database really? When we talk about a database in a traditional sense, such as the popular MySQL, PostgreSQL, or even the enterprise-grade Oracle database, then we are talking about the RDBMS or the Relational Database Management System in short. A relational database is composed of tables, fields, or indexes. As you can see from this image, each blue box represents a table and each table contains fields that represents a particular entity information. Each field in a table represents particular information, information such as the first name, the last name, etc. At the same time, the collection of fields or columns represents the schema of the table. For example, the employees table represents information regarding each employee like John Doe. The department table represents departments in a company such as purchasing, HR, or manufacturing. As you can see, there is a line between the, the table that represents the relationship between each table. And that is why it's called relational in some way. In real life, we can say that each employee is assigned to one or more departments and a department contains one or more employees. Below is a sample employees table where there are rows, these are rows, and columns for each employee details such as the first name, the last name, or email. As you can see, each row has a big set of columns. 
and all rows have the same schema. If we don't want to assign a value to a particular column, then we set it to a value null. This makes an RDMS table having what we call as a rigid or a fixed schema since all the rows has the same number of columns. From, that, from this table, the first row has a null value in the reports to column or field, which means that this employee record is not reporting to anyone as she is the president of the company. The signing each table Fields and relationship requires complex analysis. And it sounds confusing, right? So hold on. We are not going to discuss so much about the relational database. So we just need a baseline for us to understand MongoDB later. So what is MongoDB really? MongoDB is a type of a NoSQL database and is touted as an alternative to the earlier RDBMS system such as the MySQL. If an RDBMS system is called a relational database, then MongoDB is called a NoSQL or non-relational database. It stores the data in a place flexible JSON-like or JavaScript object notation document such as this image so, as you can see from this image, we have the first name, last name, and the address fields, all that, all that is readable for human being to consume. As you can see, this is schema-less, free, and an open source database. I will explain more what is meant by a schema-less database. So, before we proceed, Let's discuss first what JSON is. JSON or JavaScript object notation is a file interchange format that uses human-like readable key and value pairs or even arrays in web application and electronics exchange. Um, this is an example of a JSON document and as you can see by just looking at this document, it is easy understand what it wants to say. For example, the first name and the John key value pairs is a sample key value pair where first name is the key and John is the value to where it points to. The address field is what we call as an embedded, embedded JSON document as anything between curly braces is considered as a JSON document. The phone numbers that you're seeing here is an array of JSON objects. So as you can see, the square brackets here represents an array, and then it has two embedded JSON documents for the phone number. The children is what we call as an array that contains individual string. When trying to interact with the MongoDB database from our application, then it is necessary to work with the JSON format. What I mean is, if you want to add a record to your MongoDB database, then you would need to pass a JSON structure from your application. On the other hand, if you are retrieving information from your MongoDB database, then you would receive a JSON structure also. The application here is any client that you will use to interact with the MongoDB database server. The next post of this series will show what a client is and we will create our own client using the Python programming language. So, what really is a document in a MongoDB database? A document is how MongoDB stores the record for each JSON object that we sent it. Our representation of the person before is stored in our Mongo database in the following format. There is the underscore ID here, and, what, and this is what we call as an object ID that uniquely identifies our record in our database. Usually, this is auto-generated by the MongoDB server when we insert a row. 
the first name or in the last name fields are represented by a string of key and value pairs. The address field is represented by an object wherein there is a street address, a city, and other records represented as a string. The children, on the other hand, are just normal JSON arrays. The spouse, on the other hand, is assigned a value of null, which means also that this record does not have any spouse. Internally, MongoDB stores record in JSON format, or what we call as binary encoded version of this JSON document. In the earlier discussion, about the RDBMS table schema, I mentioned that it follows a rigid or pixie schema where each row has the same number of fields or columns. MongoDB, on the other hand, is a schema-less architecture. So, for example, in this image, it shows to you that I have two documents that describe two unique people, but the second document has no information for the children are the phone numbers. So as you can see, there is there is a phone number and children here, but the next document does not have any phone numbers or children. This means that all documents does not need to have the same schema fields like the RDBMS table. So let's now go to the concept of collection. A MongoDB collection is similar to or analogous to a table in RDBMS system. If the RDBMS table stores record as a sequence of rows, then a collection stores a series of documents inside it. Then, what do you mean by the MongoDB database? MongoDB database, on the other hand, is composed of one or more collections. It is analogous to how an RDBMS database is composed of multiple tables. In this image, you can see that I have three collections that stores the person information, the department information, and the project's information. To make you appreciate all that I am saying, I have here a tool called the MongoDB Compass which I have connected to one of my MongoDB server. I have here my database called the PeopleDB where I would be placing all of my collections. Right now, I only have one collection called People and inside it are the documents that would describe each person. The next video of this series will explain to you more how you could set up your own MongoDB database and how we are able to connect to it. Now that is a high level overview of what MongoDB is. And if you want to know more, then you could start reading the official do documentation. Next, we will discuss how we could get our hands on a MongoDB database server instance. You can install a local instance of your Mongo database in your workstation or laptop by using the community edition of this software. It is free and available in Windows, Linux, Mac OS, or even the Docker installation, which is an autom automated way of deploying software. You can visit the following page to check on the steps on how to install it on your specific platform. However, in this tutorial series, we will be using the cloud database version of this software called the MongoDB Atlas. If you are not familiar with the cloud database, then it just means that the setup and maintenance are being done by the MongoDB company itself. We will just access our database through the internet endpoint. All we have to do is sign up for a pre-tier version and we will get ourselves a running instance of a MongoDB database. The next post in this series will explain to you how to set up your own MongoDB Atlas database that you can play around with. In the next videos of this tutorial series, 
we will explore how we can interface our Arduino boards, the Raspberry Pi single board computers, and MicroPython device with the MongoDB database. I will show you how you can control your physical electronic components or circuits with data coming from our MongoDB database. So, there's so much information that I have mentioned in this video, but I just need to explain to you how the MongoDB core concept actually is. Until then, happy exploring!